This big ship right here is actually a complex object made up of several different objects and sequences. Using sequences to create complex objects isn't something I have a lot of experience with, but I don't think I've ever seen a tutorial on it. And they have some really cool advantages over the traditional way of creating complex objects in Game Maker, so I thought I'd show you how I made this big ship by nesting object and sequence pairs. The main advantage of using a mixture of sequences and objects is that because everything visual is built using sequences, they're very easy to change. For example, here is the big ship, which I've built out of several tiles from the YoYo Games Space Shooter Asset Bundle. These are all sprites. On top of those sprites, I've added several instances of my turret object. The sprite for the turret object is the base of the turret, and the turret object controls another sequence that plays the firing animation. I can come in here and redesign this ship, add some turrets, move them around, change the entire look and feel of the ship itself, and when I run the game again, everything will still work. I don't have to change any code or adjust any numbers because that's all handled by the sequence itself. It's like swapping out an object sprite, but far more useful and powerful. The way this works is by using object and sequence pairs. All of the visual elements and animations are controlled in the sequence. And the sequence itself is controlled by an object. So we have the main sequence for the ship here, sequence big ship. It's built in the normal way that you build sequences. This sequence is controlled by an object, object big ship. In the ship's create event, we create the sequence and save the ID to a variable. Ignore this global variable for the moment, we'll come back to it. The rest of this code here controls the ship's state machine. It can be whatever you need it to be. In this case, I just have a few variables for moving and firing. In our step event, I'm updating the sequences X and Y. The ship itself flies straight and doesn't change directions, so that's really all that needs to happen here. But we'll see a more complicated version in a moment. The ship's sequence takes care of updating the position of all of its own turret objects. So object big ship updates its sequence and its sequence updates all of the objects inside of it for you. Finally, in our destroy event, we destroy the sequence when this instance is destroyed. This isn't necessary for memory management as sequence instances created using layer sequence create are garbage collected, but we don't want the sequence itself existing after the object that controls it is destroyed. Next, we have the turret object and sequence pair. The main idea is the same as before, but the turret sequence is a lot more complex on our ship because it's animated and has a moment to create the actual shot. Notice that I've aligned it pointing right so that it can be rotated without using an image offset the same way you would for a sprite. The object that controls this sequence is object big ship turret. It creates this sequence just like the big ship object does, but because this sequence is animated, I also set where the sequence should be positioned. This is at the end of the sequence, and I pause at animation. Again, ignore this line, it's very important, but we'll get to it in just a moment. For firing the turret, I reset the position to the start of the animation and then play it. And because the sequence itself doesn't loop, it'll stop automatically. In the step event of the object, I'm updating the X, Y, and angle of the turret sequence. And in the destroy event, I destroy the turret sequence and create my explosion object. But actually, this isn't the full story because although I could call instance destroy on this object and things would work fine, I'm actually using instance change. So the player's missile has a collision with it, and if it hits the turret, destroys it. But instead of using instance destroy to destroy the turret, I use instance change. And the reason is that instance change allows me to replace this specific instance of the turret object inside of the sequence with another instance of another object. In this case, the destroyed turret. But the sequence will continue to update the new instance as if it were the old instance. I don't normally use instance change, but this was the only way I could figure out to replace one instance with another inside of a sequence. But let me know if I missed a better way in the comments. Now, at this point, you might have noticed that some logic from the turret is missing. How is it rotating and what is telling it to fire? All of this is controlled by the big ship that it's part of. And this is where we get to the question of what the global.myid line is doing. I wanted all of the turrets for any big ship to act together. So controlling them in the big ship object made more sense to me. 
So the big ship updates its turrets by looping through all turrets and updating the values of those turrets that it created. But unfortunately, GameMaker doesn't have any good way of figuring out which sequence any given instance is a part of. So the big ship creates its sequence and its sequence creates its objects, the turrets. But how do the turrets know which big ship created them since they don't know which sequence they're a part of? So the way I solve this problem is that right before creating the sequence, I'm saving the instance ID of the instance creating the sequence to a global variable. And when the turrets are created, they check this global variable and assign its value to their variable, my ship. This is kind of a hack. I asked for suggestions over on the GMC forum, and this one was suggested by Nidoking. There were a couple of good solutions offered there, but this was the most straightforward one for my specific project. However, I'll link that forum post below in case you were interested in what the other options were. One thing to note here is that while I tested this in all the situations relevant to the game I'm working on and didn't notice any issues, as noted at the start, this is something I'm experimenting with and I didn't test every possible situation you might come across. So you might need to figure out a different solution for your project. Looking at this whole process then, what we have is an instance of an object creates an instance of a sequence and then updates variables in that sequence instance like the sequence's position, angle, or animation through code. And this process can be nested as many times as you want. So an object can create a sequence, which can create one or many objects, which can create sequences, which can create one or many objects, and so on. With the caveat that if you need instances to know which collective group they're in, you're going to need to figure out some way of communicating that information to the nested instances, because there's no easy built-in way of doing that right now in Game Maker. And if you're interested in learning more about the game I'm working on in this video, there's a video in the top right about how I tried to make and release this game in one week.